Hello, today is Thursday, the uh, 8th day of November 2012, and in one of my videos yesterday, I made a comment about gold and silver being that of a live, and I, I really mean that at a ma well, this is the article that I'm going to be talking about to explain it, but I also want to point out that I consider everything to be conscious, maybe just to one degree only, which would be that of action-reaction, which means you react to all actions that come within the way appropriately, of course. So with that being said, I want to read this article from message2eagle.com, which is entitled, Quest for Cosmic Origins of Gold and Silver. So let's uh, get started. And there's going to be an interesting little photo in here, which it's got to do with astronomy. One of my favorite things that I like to talk about, although I don't talk about it too much on here. Message2eagle.com. In the quest for the cosmic origins of heavy elements... Heidelberg scientist Dr. Camilla Hansen has established that silver can only have materialized during the explosion of clearly defined types of star. These are different from the kind of stars producing gold when they explode. The evidence for this comes from the measurement of various high-mass stars with the help of which the stepwise evolution of the components of all matter can be reconstructed. So there's a nice uh, little uh, picture, but... At the end of the live, stars with 10 times the mass of our sun explode as so-called so -called supernova. In the process, elements like silver are either hurled out into the universe or produced in the first place. The illustration is an artist's impression of the first moments of such an explosion before the star is completely torn apart. The lightweight elements hydrogen, helium, and traces of lithium came into being a few minutes after the Big Bang. All heavier elements materialized later in the interior of stars or during star explosions, which each generate uh, the stars contributing a little to enriching the universe with chemical elements. The elements a star can generate in its lifetime depends largely on its mass. At the end of their lives, stars about 10 times the size of our sun explode as so-called so supernova-producing elements, sometimes heavier than iron, uh, that are released by the explosion. Depending on how heavy the star originally was, silver can, and gold can only materialize in this way, which is basically the birth of gold and silver. When various stars of the same mass explode, the ratio of elements generated and hurled out into the universe is identical. The constant relation is perpetuated in the subsequent generations of stars forming from the remnants of their predecessors. The investigation by Dr. Hansen and her associated uh, scientists have now demonstrated that the amount of silver in the stars measured is completely independent of the amounts of other heavy elements like gold. These observations indicate clearly for the first time that during a supernova, silver takes shape in an entirely different fusion process from that in which gold forms. Accordingly, the scientists contend that silver cannot have originated together with gold. The elements must have materialized from stars of different masses. This is the first incontrovertible evidence for a special fusion process taking place during the explosion of a star, says Dr. Hansen. Up to now, this had been more speculation. After this discovery, we must now use simulations of these processes in supernova explosions to investigate more precisely when the conditions for the formation of silver are present. That way, we can find out how heavy the stars were that could produce silver during the dramatic demise. Okay, uh, the other thing, other thing I like is simulations too, and I wanted to just make a quick note that's sort of off topic, but on that of simulation, which is the imitation of the process operation of a real world process or system over time, and I love doing simulations whenever I can. I'm a fan of it. And I'm thinking, with very high tech technology, you could do a simulation for the three different economies that I consider to be hard, neutral, and easy. Hard being the fiat empire. You set up a simulation for world situations to go through the loan type cycles that we're going through right now. We'll probably see exactly on the computer what we're seeing right now. Do a simulation for what a gold slash silver uh, honest money system would be like. And then you do a simulation of a resource-based economy. At least you get more information or you'd be better off 
determining where you go from there at that point there. Because simulations can really help do it, or getting to conclusions of things without having to go through real actual events and taking the hit kind of deal. Sort of like if you're playing the stock market game, you want to simulate uh, yourself, how a strategy does before you put into action kind of deal. And then when you see it does well, then you put it to action. But that's all. But this is all about, of course, the gold and silver witches all over the universe. In fact, 98% of the universe is only two elements, hydrogen and helium. Just an interesting little point, and take care.